Well, welcome everyone. We're talking about that golden goose tonight because we're going to be doing some marketing for sure and getting everything rolling in a marketing plan. Uh, I am an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 12 years old and 75 now and still rocking and rolling. I can tell you it's a good life, so it's not happy every day. And there's some highs and some lows, but it's kind of nice to own your own business uh, and, and have have a, a ability to set the own direction that you want to go in. So I'm going to encourage all of us to, to see how we can help each other because entrepreneurship is about networking. No one can do it by themselves, so let's all join in and do it together. In that effort, I've created the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates, which is just a kind of a club uh, of, of folks just like you and I that are in business every day uh, trying to make these businesses work and to grow them. And the entrepreneurs uh, we are and the associates we become when we start networking together so that we can build a better business and, and move on hopefully to more financial security. And who knows, maybe one day have a business that we can sell and go down and retire somewhere and enjoy all the money that you're going to get for the business. I am not a lawyer and I am not a CPA. I'm just an old fellow here that's been in business for 63 years sharing free advice with you. And the first piece of advice I've got for you is always get one or two second and third opinions when you're getting ready to make an important decision related to your business or personal security. And that's why the small business centers are so valuable to you because you can get confidential help from professional folks who are interested in your best interest and no one else's, uh, and it's strictly confidential. So let me encourage you to, to go to those small business centers. The best one I know of is right in Pamlico County, uh, with the uh, sponsored by the community college there. And we're certainly lucky to have with us tonight our sponsor, Katie Shorter. She is a Blue Ribbon Director, and if you're not taking advantage of all the help that she can offer you, you're a cotton-picking nut. Let me tell you, how else can you get free employee to help you in your business? And Katie's willing to serve you and looking forward to meeting you. Call her up and make an appointment. And if you know anyone else that's thinking about starting a business and would just like to talk about it, have them give Katie a call and get things started. It's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, and on this platform, you got a chat button. And on that chat button, I want you to type in your name and your email address, your hometown, and tell me what type, kind of business you're in. We need that information if we can be most effective in helping you and sending things to you. And we need that information to make sure that you are registered as a part of this program. Those registrations are really important. So when you're signing up for additional ones, make sure you pre-register online. And that way, uh, Katie will get funding for to keep the programs going this year and next year. Uh, a lot of study guides will go out to you related to this program. The main one is the one that's numbered number 967. That is a, the talking points on this particular guide. But there's a lot of other guides there that are important. Primarily, your homework assignments are there. Uh, fair market value is outlined for you, as is marketable profit centers. The others are just good reading that you might enjoy uh, having in your business journal. I'm glad to share them with you. There's no charge for it. They are all word files, and I'll give you a warning. Every word's not spelled properly, and every comma's not in the right place. So I, forgive me, please, but you can take your word files and uh, uh, arrange them and create them to create the documents that you need, and you're welcome to it. Your homework assignments are all listed there. These assignments are critical for the types and the quality and the degree of uh, certificates that, that the Academy wants to send to you, and we do want you to win. But it's important that you say to me that if you just can't do some of these re uh, things for whatever reason, send me a note and tell me why, because this is not a take it or leave it proposition. What we want is everyone to participate and earn those certificates, uh, start increasing your uh, self-confidence, and keep coming back to the webinars. Some people just go the extra mile, and I'm so proud of them. Let's talk about them. Angela is with us tonight. Thank you, Angela, for staying with us and being such a great entrepreneur and, and starting to grow your business. I'm looking forward to the progress you're making. Uh, hopefully, Nicole uh, can be with us. She had mentioned that she might not be able to be with us tonight, or she's got children graduating. And, and this time of year, parents have a lot to do at the schools, no doubt. But she's done a great job with her uh, her marketing campaign, and 
looking forward to watching that grow. Uh, Sonia Guyton, I want to mention her because she is operating in Pamlico County with her with her cleaning services. We talked about that last night. But mainly she's learned how to t uh, combine the cleaning service with the home health type services to put together a real substantial and uh, sustainable business. It's important that in all of our business we figure out more than just one thing to do so that when we serve our customers we'll have a chance to sell them more than one thing. She's done a good job with her logo. And Tim's uh, been with us from time to time. I don't see him on board tonight, but he's starting up a uh, repair business on equipment and, and large trucks over in Arapahoe. Got him a real good little business started over there. Now this is hard work. So all of us keep your prayers up for Tim because the temperature is going up and the work is hard. So uh, he, he's going to be doing a lot of sweating if he makes a lot of money. So we'll be pulling for him to go along. Uh, Tom Davis is, ready, is uh, preparing himself to help every one of us improve our websites and to get up and running on board. So it's going to be good to have a fellow entrepreneur that we can send some business to. He's a great fellow with a great smile and uh, easy to talk to and I think you'll enjoy doing business with him when, he's, when you're ready to go talk to him. Uh, uh, Keisha, number one uh, notary public in the Pamlico County area. She's building her business and working on a number of different things looking after her children as well so thank you for all you're doing uh, Keisha. We appreciate you including the work she's doing to help getting a hand wash and detail business up and running there in the county. That's a good picture right there, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. You know, uh, a detail and hand washing business is part of the cleaning business family. So as we said last night, you might have a, a cleaning business, and one of the uh, profit centers you would add to folks is say, when I come to clean your house, do you want us to wash your car while we're there? What, what What's the deal there? That's another $70, $80 that you might be able to earn and not have to go another mile in, in, in your uh, in your day's travel. And Beverly, we love you. We are pulling for you. We're praying for your new business. Congratulations for tackling that project, taking an old building and turning it into a, a new uh, retail center in a community that's looking forward to having something new and colorful. And I know you're going to do a great job there. I think you said you're having a soft opening next week, and maybe later on we'll have a grand opening. So uh, thank you so much for participating. I love your colors and all that you're doing to uh, promote art uh, and selling in the area. Christina's with us, and thank you for your loyalty, Christina, and for all the work you're doing promoting your products. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more videos from you uh, promoting yourself. You work real hard with your videos. I've noticed to help other people promote their business and I want you to see some that you're doing on your own. Uh, this was a good one that I saw and it certainly uh, noticed it online the other day. Crusader has done a good job there. That's a one style of, of videos that is very effective, uh, and we're going to be seeing some more tonight. Uh, Chuck is with us tonight, and we've already talked to him once, and Chuck has, has uh, started turning a hobby into a, a business with his woodcrafts. Basically, uh, you'll see what he's up to, but thank you so much, Chuck, for, for your loyalty and, and for hanging in there. We all want to see your business uh, get up and running. And I've been thinking about what I want you to build, and I want to hear more about those wind chimes. Norm and I are kind of into that, so when I hear more and see a menu, maybe uh, we can give you some business as well. All right. What are you going to do? Why is your name up here? Why aren't you here? Uh, let me help uh, promote your business. So if, if you have an interest in, in learning more and kind of getting started, this is a great platform to try out ideas amongst friends and uh, share and get good feedback on them. So if you want to be a part of this, all you got to do is uh, send me the information and I'll get you into the program. I enjoy it as much as anything else that I do. Nothing, nothing at all is more important to help jumpstart your business today than putting together some good video introductions. Video introduction of yourself and a video introduction for each product. I don't spend right much time on this tonight because it is the most important thing I feel like 
to help you jumpstart your business. So pay pay close close attention. And again, we don't go back to Chuck. So Chuck was kind enough to send me a uh, a, a raw video that he had done himself, and I want to share it with you. Uh, it's a little long, and I may cut it off early because it's a little long, but it, it, it is very effective, and it's better for you to start out with a long video like this one so it can be trimmed and inserts can be put in it. So let's take a look. Everybody just lean back, and I know the sound may not be really good on some of these, so turn your volume up as high as you can, and I hope it comes through. But sometimes on these uh, these platforms, the video's sound doesn't come through, and it may be a little jumpy. So here we go. Uh, pay attention, please. Hi, my name's Chuck, and I'm in the All Wooden Uniques workshop where I make uh, various things. I create and design various things, like bird feeders of various kinds. I uh, love making boxes of different shapes and sizes, uh, jewelry boxes they may become, uh, and of uh, different kinds of wood, some of our rather exotic kinds of wood. So I love making these things. Several months ago, my, my daughter uh, sent me a, a picture, and she said, hey, I really like what's in this picture. Can you make it for me? It was a primitive. She likes primitives. And I said, sure, I'll make it. And I did, and she loved it. A little while later, I, I get another picture in the mail. Hey, I really like this. Can you make it for me another primitive? I said, sure, I'll be happy to do it. And she loved it. Guess what? A little later, I get another picture. I really like this. Would you make this for me? I'd be happy to. And whenever I go visit my daughter up in Maryland, I look at all the things I've made for her. And uh, I am so happy that it makes her happy that these things are in her house. My granddaughter, just the other day, mentioned that she would like to have an island in her kitchen. I said, I would be happy to make that for you. Just give me the dimensions, and I'll go from there. And so that's what she's going to do. Maybe I can do the same for you. You have your eye on something that's really special. I can custom make that for you, just for you. Uh, my name is Chuck. The number is 252-808-7666. And, and by the way, if you like heavenly breezes or musical breezes, if you like enchanting sound, sounds outside your house, I custom make wind chimes that are sure to gather your or garner your attention. Again, my name is Chuck. 252-808-7666. Look forward to uh, doing some business. Let's give Chuck a hand. Give him a Yay. hand. Chuck, that was fantastic. And I want to tell you, <clears throat> if there's not, I've never seen a better example of taking a face that's just as ugly as mine and turn it into a video that everyone will love because they hear you speak and look at you. Neither one of us are going to get a blue ribbon for looks, but I want to tell you, you get five blue ribbons for personality. Just kidding. You're a good-looking guy. Just kidding. <laughs> but the key is the message is so clear that I want to come down and see you shop and shake your hand and hug your neck and all that, and that's what videos can do for you. Uh, it can take, and, and all of us can be uh, appreciate that. And, and when you ended that up by saying, and by the way, man, I want to tell you, you got the extraordinary uh, agree uh, certificate right there going the extra mile because that was a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. But you know what? That's just the beginning. That was just raw. And what as good as that was, and it's all right to put on your website like that because, indeed, it, it's a winner. But if you want to hold somebody's attention, it's hold. It would be hard to hold a brand new shopper for that long. So what we have to do is learn to enhance our videos uh, uh, a number of different ways. So I wanted to share this with you, and to tell you right now, we hadn't spent any money yet. We have not spent any big bucks yet. 
to end up with a great marketing tool that's as effective as an ad on television that might cost you a thousand dollars for every 30 seconds it runs. So when you have that raw video that you can take with your telephone, the first thing I want us to do is to convert it to a YouTube, to convert it to a YouTube uh, video that costs no money either. And then I want us to add some scrolling text because is when someone's watching a video, if they can stop that video and write down your name or your phone number or your email address, that's a big plus. Otherwise, they're just watching it and getting get interested in it. But when they want to get in touch with you, and that's what you want here is to ha how to help them find you, is have some scrolling video on your uh, uh, scrolling messages on your video while it's playing so people can stop and get the messages from it. Also, you can stop that video and insert pictures like Chuck's made some wonderful things. And right while that video is going and while he's talking, you can insert pictures uh, so people will get a close-up view of maybe what's a distant view in the, in the video. A little bit of technique can really enhance your video and help you sell more of what you want to sell and get the message out there. Uh, so Chuck has some great pictures right in his video. I was just able to single them out. Now, I'm going to try to solicit some help from people who know how to do this. My skill level is real down on editing videos, but uh, I'm searching for folks that will help us do this. We're going to enhance this one for Chuck. Also, you can stop it and add logos in there. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is one of Beverly's logos. Uh, put that right in your video. Uh, here's, here's another one of the videos that we've seen, I mean logos. And you can use music and voice. Uh, to enhance it even more. So starting out with a good long raw video like Chuck has provided to us gives you the, the base to, to, to start putting together a great marketing tool. Now uh, I want to give all the credit to this to, to Maddie uh, uh, McComb, who, who my, uh, one of my assistants, who took one of our raw videos that I shot out in the field and turned it into this. And I want to say to you, that this video has already helped me sell uh, uh, probably five of these hay balers that I don't think I would have sold if we hadn't had the videos at the website. So uh, take a notice here. Now, of course, you want to buy a hay baler, you can call me up, but I don't think any of y'all are in that business. But what I want you to be noticing primarily is the the script. Uh, the the and we'll just see what Maddie has done with this. I'm so proud of her, and it certainly has been a good investment. Hello, I'm Steve Carter. I want to tell you that CarMax FMRB330 is one heck of a fine software. I had the pleasure to go to the field with it last week. We shot this video for you. It's just fantastic. We sold several of them to, uh, to fine saw contractors, and they are 100% happy. I'm looking forward to you giving us a call so I can give you a quote, a really good price, ship it to you anywhere in the United States, and then get a message back from you how pleased you are. CarverEquipment.com. Let's do some business. All right. <clears throat> Thank you for watching my commercial. No extra charge for that. But let me tell you, that is an example of what a video can be enhanced to do for you. And it's important that you have it, you, you, you bring it down to a compact size to 30 seconds is the ideal length. And it takes a little work to cram it all in. But like Chuck's uh, video, he, he made it long enough that an editor has plenty of room to work in there, and that's, that's really important to do that. All right, moving on from videos, I hope you got the message of how important they can be, how inexpensive it is, and, uh, and, and how effective it can be for you. Uh, every week we send you a copy of the 40 drill skills, and on Thursday nights we go over them. Uh, part of uh, your test and ability to win more certificates is if you take these drill skills uh, in, on your Word file and just uh, put in over each one of them how you will use that in your business. In week one, we talked about uh, these particular eight, eight ones. Uh, what do you want a business plan for? You want it to tell you what's left. The marketing plan tells you what's next. The three types of profit centers are those that bring new business in, those that uh, bring us repeat business, and those that give us big ticket sales. The RFC is a raving fan customer. NDCP, no demand, change the plan, always be connecting the dots. 
And what is by the way? That's the password to up sales and cross sales, but mainly it's the password and byway and highway to raising your profits, to stacking your profits. So by the way are the most important three words that we're going to have in this whole series. What's the three best ways to catch fish? Keep fresh bait in the water, keep fresh bait in the water, keep fresh bait in the water. What's the best way to catch customers? Keep sending out continuous promotions. You have to be continuous and steady sending messages out to your customers. These messages will include links to your web pages. These messages will include photos of new things that you're doing. These emails that you're sending out, these messages will have video clips in them. So we use these tools, but the tools aren't any good as long as they're in our tool belt. The tools only work when we get them in front of our customers' eyes. So next week we're going to talk about what's the best way to find customers, and you know what the answer is? Help them find you. Help them find you. That's how you find customers. Week two we talked about our business can't be all things to all people, but it must be everything to some people. Y'all say that with me. It must be everything to some people. And those some people will become your Raven fan customers. Look, I don't want you to pay off any long-term debts you've got with short-term cash flow. If you borrowed money for 60 months, pay 60 payments on it. Don't drain your bank account. Don't drain your cash flow. Don't get in a bind because you're trying to pay off the debt earlier than you have to because you need to keep cash reserves. The thing that puts more startup businesses out of business than anything else is a shortage of cash. The thing that puts more businesses out of business faster than anything else is not being properly funded. So as, as you start your business and you start building up a little bit of reserve, don't worry about paying off debts early. You pay them on time and keep your credit score up, but don't worry about draining your cash to pay off debt. What's the difference in marketing and advertising? Man, that's the night subject. We'll be on it heavy. But marketing is the long term. It's the big picture. Advertising is the short term, what we're doing for specific issues that are facing us. Who's your toughest competitor? I want to tell you, it's the distractions in your life. Who's my toughest competitor? Distractions in my life. So until we have to deal with that, and how do you deal with that? You, you learn to set priorities. You take care of, of putting the most important things first. And there are a lot of, a lot of important things in our lives, looking after children, our parents, uh, doing things we've got to do. You might be working three jobs. But as soon as you can, ease in the priorities that you can spend some time to help get your business started or to help get it jump-started. You're going to be asked in your test to define fair market value. It's right here in front of you on the screen, and I'll give you a handout on it, but it is so important that we talked about last week in pricing your product and in your business plan. You need to know the definition of this, so commit it to memory if you can and write it down again and again. Now, L&H advertising. That is the look and the hook, the L and the H. I want all of you to be great hookers, no doubt about it, because you need to know how to put a hook in your advertising, and that hook is the call to action, the call to action. We'll talk about that more tonight, too. I want you to define positive cash flow. What is positive cash flow? What is negative cash flow? Well, you've heard a lot of definitions in the past, but old Steve-O here has got a new one for you. Positive cash flow is when someone, a potential buyer, comes into your space with money in their pocket. That's positive cash flow. And if they leave your space and you didn't get any of that money, that's negative cash flow. Now, that's thinking like a predator. And when it comes to cash flow, entrepreneurs have to be predators because we need that cash flow to keep us going. Now, I don't mean I want you to attack people and steal their money, <laughs> but I want you to have it on your mind that it's important for you to close the sale. We can be nice and we can tell all the, the stories we want to and give away all the information you want to, but I want to tell you, Beverly, when people come into the, to the blue crab, I want them to look around and feel good and kick the tires and all that, but before they leave there, I want you to have some of their money. 
because that will create positive cash flow. If they're walking out that door and you didn't get any of that money, that's negative cash flow. I've had that way of thinking now for 62 years, and you know what? It really helps me close sales because customers appreciate the fact when a business person acts like they're hungry. Yeah, if you see an old dog out by high, beside the house there and he's he looks like he's healthy and well fed and he's not acting strange, you're not gonna give him a bite. But if he's up there asking for some food, you're more apt to feed him. Now I'm not comparing us to old dogs, but I am saying well, I am an old dog in one way, but I am saying <laughs> look, you have to ask customers for their money. You gotta say, Look, let me put my hand in your pocket and get my money out. And you're going to be so happy you did business with me, we'll, you'll, get, you'll show me that other pocket. That's the attitude that it takes to be energetic, energetic and, and dramatic in creating cash flow. Take it and leave it is awful. That is when you're saying to your whole customers, here's the price tag on it, take it or leave it. If you don't give them any opportunity to make you an offer or to wiggle a little bit, then take it or leave it means that 85% of the people are going to leave it and keep looking for a cheaper price. Even though people want to buy quality and are willing to pay a little more, they want to be able to talk about it. So take it or leave it is a no-no. Merchandise it in such a way to encourage people to, to make offers and to hang around is what you want to do. The three times rule. The three times rule we talked about last week is that if you've got something and you don't know how to put a price tag on it, multiply it times three, and that's a good place to start. The first part of it uh, helps you get your cost out of it. The second part uh, helps you cover your overhead. And the last part, the last third, helps give you some room to, uh, to uh, make profit and pay your taxes. We'll talk tonight about the 27 times rule, and that's... That's going to help us remember that shoppers need to see your presentation at least nine times, nine times before they will consider you credible and do business with you. And they're going to miss your ads. They're going to miss your videos. Even though you've got them out there for them to see, they will miss them two out of three times. That means when we're planning a marketing campaign, a serious campaign, we need to think about how to put our message in front of our customers 27 times. That's right. And then we'll get into that more deep for a little later. Drill skill number 21 is about yes, if, and no, but negotiating. And we'll cover this uh, real big in, in, uh, in week, uh, week six about how to negotiate. But it is so important that you keep the shopper talking until you can close the deal. That's why if you're just saying take it or leave it and don't encourage some type of conversation, there's a good chance that y'all can't find common ground and have a deal. Yes, if, no, but negotiating. I've written a book on this, and I'd be glad to share it with you. Number 22 and 23, the most important web pages, the two most important web pages that you'll have are your mobile page, because that's where people see you on the telephone, and your pages that sell at your website, and we're going to call those landing pages. We'll jump into that heavy duty, but these are these are all part of your quiz, too. These are. What brings customers back? Why do people come back to see you? And we need repeat business, right? I mean, we need a lot of repeat business. 40% of that is customer service, and 60% of it is hospitality. So what brings what keeps them coming back? These two items are so important. Now, here's the challenge that we'd have for someone uh, like Beverly. Beverly's going to be in Aurora. She's going to be located in in, in a uh, a place that people, most people that's going to come to that store are visitors to the community to come to the museums there. So it's going to be important for, for Beverly not only to have something for those first-time shoppers, but have some method, some uh, strategy that you have that keeps people coming back, Beverly, so you get repeat business from folks uh, every time they come through or, or to have something that's so good they want to keep coming back on their own. So here's the question. This is a great big world. I mean, and we're just little folks. I mean, there's billions of people out here, and we're just one spot on a great big globe. Uh, what what's, what's going to make people want to come to our website or to our store 
with it's such a big world that we're in, and we're just little business people, there's no doubt about it. But we're proud entrepreneurs, so we're gonna figure this out. How we gonna how we gonna change uh, our position from just being a place you can't even see on the globe? What are we gonna do? Well, maybe we can do a little bit to bring them in a little bit closer, at least to our part of of North Carolina, uh, uh, by a little bit more. But that's still a long way off. Uh, that's nowhere close to our footstep, is it? What are we going to do? What are we going to do to make those areas come right straight to where we are? That's what marketing is all about. That's changing people's attention from everyone else that's out there and bring them right straight to us. That's what we want to do. Right straight to Bayboro is where we want to bring the attention. And that's not an easy task. But it's a doable task, I'll guarantee you. Let me tell you. Uh, what does it take to be uh, uh, to have the top the top 18 non-boosted spots on on the internet? What does it take for you to take your business, a small business, and end up at the right spot, end up at the top of the list? Well, what it's going to take from us is vision and mission. It's going to take some investment, a darn good webmaster, some good look and hook marketing using SEO, search engine optimization, to help people find us. Can you do that? Can you help your business be in the top 18 non-boosted spots? Non-boosted means that these are not pay for clicks. Uh, that you earn these through what you've done with your SEO and your other work. What does it take? Can you do it? Well, I did it, and I'm darn proud of it. Of course, it's taken me 26 years to be able to say this, but when you look for CarverEquipment.com or Carver Equipment or Steve Carver or Fast Forward Services or any of our brands, we're going to be at the top of the cotton picking page. And that's done because, uh, not that I'm extra smart, because I am certainly not, but you have to keep working at it and stay with it long enough, keep improving that you can end up with this type of uh, search engine uh, uh, performance and positioning. You can do it uh, following the thing. I'm trying to share with you the same things that I use to help your names come up just like this at the top of the page. Set your priorities. Learn the skills we're talking about. Now, here I'm going to put a little pressure on you because we're halfway through this series, and a lot of y'all have been along for the ride, and I know you're kind of serious about it. Some of you are very serious about it. I see Tom is joining us. Tom, glad to have you on board. Thanks for joining in. But here's what it is. It's time to do this homework because once you start doing it, you'll get into it. You'll start getting excited about it. And, and, and when you get your videos up and you start uh, enjoying the extra charisma, the extra confidence that you have, you'll become a lot more effective entrepreneur. Now, I'm not just going to say you all to do this and you all to do that. I'm going to give you some tools to work with. I took this whole big marketing campaign thing that everybody hears about and tried to condense it into five different things that are really important to help you to help you uh, after tonight start making things happen. And and they're basically uh, what I'd like for you to do is to identify your profit centers. First of all, come up with a menu, and then say what time that you actually want to have be on the market selling these items or selling these services. Come up with a date. If we got a date we can shoot for, then we got a goal to set up. And now, uh, and I want that date to be uh, 60 days out, and because I want you to have a marketing plan from tonight for the next 60 days. What are you going to do step by step to get ready to open up your business? We need to develop your pricing and your discounting and your targeting strategies. What are your upsell items? See, I've got this. They're so important. They're right here, number three in the list. Uh, we have to, uh, if we really expect to stay in business a while, we don't need upsell items uh, to help us increase our, our, our big ticket items. So that is a major part of our planning, how you can package or bundle things or, or to bring in some bigger ticket items. It's time to get serious about the videos. I've already said that enough tonight. Hopefully you've already got that message. And now it's time to actually uh, get our database up and running and start running and posting and boosting and displaying and sending out messages. That's the plan. Now, what do you got to do to make it happen? <laughs> Five steps. Figure out some way to get your message on the Internet, either through website or Google My Business or 
or your Facebook, uh, not Facebook, yeah, Facebook pages, and also YouTube channel. Maybe you need to use YouTube or uh, eBay or Craigslist to help get promoted because you can use eBay and Craigslist to bring people to your other sites. Figure out a way to get your message out to your public. If they can't see you, they can't find you. That's all there is to it. Now, I promised y'all earlier, and I don't know how that happened. I promised y'all earlier, what is going on here? Excuse me. I promised you earlier that I would share with you a very valuable secret, and that is how to create raving fan customers. You don't know, do you? No, but I don't share it with you. You do it by planting raving fan customer brain seeds. You ever heard of them, brain seeds? Well, you don't get them at the seed shop. The only place you get them is from Katie Shorter's webinars right here tonight, and there's no extra charge for this million-dollar piece of information because they're out there. Your raving fans are out there, but where are they? They're hiding from you. They will hide from you because they're nice to have, but they don't happen by themselves. They are hard to find. Sometimes you do everything right, but still you can't find that raving fan customer. Why don't they get with it? I mean, you've done all your work. You're a great business person, great products, prices are good. You've got good hospitality, good customer service, but you don't have raving fan customers. And you know what? That's the way a lot of businesses are. they got loyal customers, re, uh, good customers, uh, people that come often and spend a lot of money with you, but they are not going out in the world and telling other people they ought to come and see you too. Well, I don't see how you do it. Well, first of all, and forgive me for being a little dramatic here, we're going to go through the process as if we're planting raving fan customer seeds in a brain. We're going to get our shovel out, knock a hole in the head, and give us a place to drop some seeds into it. That's what we're doing right here. We've got that hole open in the brain, ready to do it. And we're going to take our Raven Fan customer brain seeds, they kind of look like Rice Krispies, and sprinkle them. Sprinkle them, and then they'll fall down in the brain there. <laughs> That's right. Just going to put them right in. Is that graphic enough? What do you think? Put them right in the brain. I can just see them falling down there and in that blood and ooze and all that stuff. And as soon as they go down, then we're going to repack that brain. We're going to put it back together. And we have just done step one and two. Step one is when we planted the seed. And how do you do that? You pledge to your customer. It's talking. It's no cost here. It's words that you say right out of your mouth. I'm going to do everything I can to see that you are 100% satisfied with our products and services. When's the last time a business owner said that to you? Maybe never. But if you've done business with Carver Equipment for the last 62 years, you heard it every time you came in the door from me and every manager I've got and hopefully every employee I have because it's a part of what you do as a company. You let customers know that you want them to be 100% satisfied. If they hear you say that enough, they will believe it. And if you, and there's a side to this that you need to, you need to produce, you need to be serious about this. Now, notice I didn't say that I'm going to see that you're 100% satisfied because you can't satisfy everybody. Just know that. Everyone can't be 100% satisfied. But you can promise to try. You can promise to do all you can to see that they're 100% satisfied. And after you say that step one, you say another sentence. Just two sentences. You're going to be so pleased you did business with us that you'll want to tell your friends and family they should just shop here as well. That's right. That's step one and two to create a raving fan customer. So, Beverly, when you're having that grand opening and soft opening down there and Chuck, as people come in into your store, uh, start trying this. Start Just use this. Let it be a part of your persona, a part of your introduction that you're saying, look, I'm all about your 100% satisfaction, and I want you to be so happy that you're going to tell your friends and neighbors to come and see us. It's just saying the words and repeat it enough so it's kind of sinking in. That's step one and two. Now, there's a step three that I'll talk about a little later. So how are we going to get started now? COVID is still kicking around, isn't it? We're still hearing about re different variances and such as that. So I've got to put in here for you to be successful and to be looking forward to 2022, 
you have to think about reconnecting with our family and our friends and our customers. Uh, if you have been in business and you've lost a connection, start redoing your database and, and, and making sure that you get back in touch with people that can help your business uh, be promoted. And then everything we talk about in, in, in life today, in the uh, talking COVID, is about how to have easy delivery, how make it to make it easy for customers to do business with you and end up with the product or the service. So that's where drive-throughs come in to be important. That's where takeouts become important, and that's where pickups become important. So when Beverly's getting her store open and such as that, if she was going to be in any type of food business or any type of selling products that people can buy, having seen what the COVID can do for everyone, then we'd have to think about, well, do I have a drive through option here? Well, those places that don't, they certainly have figured out a way to have a takeout or a pickout up option. Putting a drive through window in is expensive, and there's a lot to it. But offering the service that you will take it out to the car or you will make it easy for customers to come to the door and pick it up, that can bring a lot of business to you that otherwise would not come in because it's on people's minds. So keep it on your mind as well. Think about rebooting. Let folks know that you're doing this. So we'll have a business card that lets them know that you're offering this type of service. It can go a long way to encourage that, that very fortunate few to come in to you and do business. Now, last week we talked, two weeks ago we talked about the business plan. Well, last week, the business plan. That plays into it, and a major part of helping you figure out what's left is for you to figure out how you're going to go about your marketing. So marketing is our main subject tonight, but it is a key, your marketing and advertising uh, budget, right here where the cursor is, right there, uh, that marketing and advertising budget is a part of something that's got to be planned for. Marketing and advertising are investments, and you need to plan to make an investment before you can get a return on it. So there will be some money and some energy to be spent. I don't want you to waste it, but we do want a marketing plan that's working. So you've got this graphic here. You can use it to apply it to you most any way that you want to, and we'll be going through this. Uh, the Golden Goose Marketing Plan, uh, introduced by yours truly, Steve Carver, at no extra charge to you. It's part of the plan that I want it to work for you. So let's start right over here. We're going to start by what we're searching for is what's next. That's our goal is to find out what's next. But to get to what's next, we need to do some things to make some sales, right? We need to think about uh, what has to happen before we'll start making sales. We need to do some surveying and product development and forecasting and stocking, all the items that are listed there on the right-hand side. You can read them as good as I can right along that right-hand side, lots of different items. So if you don't have your handout yet, make sure when you do get it, your study guide, that you go in here and you check off each one and see how each one of these uh, uh, chores apply to your business and what you need to do to get started. So you know, getting started is, is fairly easy to do. One of the most important things that we've got to do is come up with our targeted customer groups because we don't want to waste money trying to sell to the whole world when it's a small, uh, several small targeted groups of customers is where we need to focus our money when we're spending that. Now, next week, we're going to talk about how to really target and send our messages to particular groups of people. Now, I don't spend much time on that tonight, but it is a very important subject. So once we get our marketing out and such as that, people will start coming in. Well, here they come. <clears throat> You've made a sale, and right down here, and you know what? you made a sale, and is, the, is that a golden egg? You're darn right it is. Uh, that, that, that golden goose is give you an egg. If you're able to take that golden egg and go to the bank and make a deposit, pat yourself on the back and say, hallelujah, my marketing plan is working. I want to keep doing it. And so are you successful at that point in time? No. And that's the difference in what I'm preaching tonight and what most people talk about. Most marketing plans are all about how to make that sale and close that sale, and that is important. But if you're going to be in business a long, long time, you're only halfway home because there's some factors here we need to talk about. You need to do some things when you make that sale. 
uh, you need to do some things. The main one, number one, is have some things there where you can say, and by the way, so you can take that first sale and enlarge it because that is the best time to increase your profits right there. So remember that. Also, the people that you're selling to, of course, they're, they're, they're great. But you know what? A lot of people may come into your store or send emails to you or ask for quotes that you do not sell. Here's a secret. You don't want to forget about them because your marketing plan really worked to bring them to the point to ask you questions or to shop with you. So getting their names and email addresses are so very important for you to put into your database. Whether you made the sale or not to them, you want that information for future reference. Today in my business, I added 16 different email addresses from customers that had sent me email inquiries that I hadn't heard from before. I take those email addresses, I put them over in a file, and then we incorporate those into my database later on. Uh, so we do, do this every day just as a, a regular way of doing business. Last month, I think I added about 100 email addresses. And they're so important when you're doing your keeping fresh bait in the water uh, plan. So here we go. We don't remember those names. So I mentioned to, to Chuck and I mentioned to uh, Beverly uh, and Tom, places where you don't have some uh, storefronts or people coming to your business. It's a good idea to have a jar there, some way or some, some type of drawing where people will fill out a ticket and for a drawing. And part of what they have to fill out on that ticket is their name and their email address to qualify to be a winner. And then every month, maybe you'll give away $100 or a gift or a gift certificate, uh, uh, something like that. So always have a drawing going on where you can get customers uh, to register and give you their database information uh, because it's, it'll be very valuable to you. Uh, and it's kind of exciting for people as well. I know this works. It works really well. I was at a, a, a used car dealership asked me to help them with their marketing campaign year before last is well, when COVID started. And that was one of the first things that we did is to help them get a database started. And they had a little $100 per week drawing. Uh, and everyone that came in the store was encouraged to register. And now they're building up their database and it is paying them big, big dividends. So it's something to use. It costs very little to do it. We need to feed our database. So we've got the golden egg, so let's move on now. We're going to make that deposit. Congratulations. I hope it's a big deposit. The bigger, the better, right? We're going to make that deposit, but we're only halfway home because now the rest of the work comes into play. Right now is when you make sure you remind that customer that you really want them to be 100% satisfied, that you really want them to tell their neighbors to, to, to uh, have – for them to tell their neighbors to come and do business with you. That is so important for, to do. After that sale is made and you enter the names into your database and you make sure they remember that you are after their 100% satisfaction, the magic marketing moment occurs because that is the specific time that the Golden Goose campaign comes into play. The magic marketing moment is the tool that you use to know what's next. And what I mean by what's next, first of all, let me have a caveat here. All of us as small business owners will have times when we're down, when sales are slow or things are not going the way we want them to, and their cash flow is tight, and we'll wonder if we can stay in business another week or not or another month. Stay up at night and worry about it. Uh, how you don't take care of your employees if things don't improve in a hurry, or how am I going to borrow money to stay in business? I've lived that for so many, many, many years. But you know what? Once I put together a structured marketing plan in my little business, I knew that I would have a what's next. I had a good, comfortable feeling that if I did a few things right, my business would keep coming back. And that's why I'm so happy to share this with you, because it can give you some breathing room in your psyche. The magic marketing moment is when you have a chance to talk to that customer that you've just made a sale to, and you say, and you say, I'm so glad that you're happy with your product. Now, what I want you to do is when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you were going to be buying something 
uh, uh, an attachment to go with this thing later on in September, or you mentioned maybe that your neighbor had an interest in this, or yes, I appreciate what you did. Uh, do we need to make an appointment next month and next month for this uh, service that we're offering to you? Uh, let's get your name on the calendar for the next time you're going to need this or that. You see, you're saying, and by the way, let's plan for the future together. And using those words and customers giving you the feedback on trying to help you promote your business down the road, that is so valuable for you because it helps you, number one, start filling in your appointment dates if that's the type of customer it is, or number two, knowing when people are going to be ready for another product or another service so you'll have it ready for them when, when the market comes. Number three, it gives you insight for your for your crystal ball to, to see what the future is probably going to hold for this market or that market. In other words, it's telling you what's next so you can be ready for it. And being ready for it gives you the confidence that, yeah, things are slow today, but if I keep doing this and staying in touch with my customers and doing my continuous promotions and do my videos, I will have business keep coming because I am getting repeat business from satisfied customers who are becoming my raving fan customers. That is the golden goose marketing plan. And whatever portion or every portion of it that you put together can help you jumpstart and power up your business. So let's, let's dig into it a little deeper. It needs to be a work of art. It needs to be your art, what you're doing, because every business will be a little different. And I want you to have a plan. So as you get started, if you decide you want to go to the newspapers or the radio uh, and do some advertising in those or magazines, everyone selling advertising has a plan. Yeah, they're good business people, but you know what their plan is all about? Them making profit. <laughs> their plan is not about you making profit. It's about their company's profit. That is the key to this thing because the worst person you can take advertising advice from is the person that's selling you advertising. <laughs> now, I've given this, this same program in front of newspaper uh, teams and such as that. I've done several of these marketing plans actually to newspaper staff, sales teams, and they didn't particularly like that statement, but I said it anyway because it's the truth. They need to convince the customer that they're in there for their benefit. So I want you to take your plan and your budget, and you say to that advertising executive, this is what I've got to spend. Now, you modify your plan to suit my needs. And you know what will happen? They'll be glad to do it. Yeah, they had to come to you with a plan because that's that's what we do. We have a menu. But you don't just fall into their menu because it sounds good at the time or you feel like you're being pressured. Don't do it. If you're not getting a plan that suits your menu, then don't advertise with those people because, listen, 95% of all marketing and advertising money is wasted. Wasted. That's why I don't promote to you. Use these videos. Use these databases. Use your website to send your messages out. And when you get a good deal and it's worth spending some extra money, then do that. But just don't buy into the Chamber of Commerce point of view that you've got to give the local advertising companies a lot of your money or you're not worth a toot. That don't work. Uh, use them when it suits your needs and suits your budget. Remember again, Take it or leave it is a no-no. you got to offer more than that. All right, let's talk about the 27 times rule for a minute. Forgive me for going so fast. I've got a lot to cover here. And it's not all about me trying to cover this. It's, I want to give you a dose of all this information. You'll be able to watch the video later if you want to, the recording. But get your hand out and do this. I don't slow down from time to time. And the 27 times rule has a good message in it, so let's kind of sync on that. The importance of the 27 times rule, it teaches us how to structure our thinking when we're getting ready to open our business and promote our, our opening campaigns, and then on down the road. I still use it every day. But once you become established and you have a regular a flow of, of information out to your customers, uh, this, this will kind of fade away a little bit. But now... A customer needs to hear from you about nine times or have nine exchanges before they do business with you. 
That's true on the internet. I see that with my internet customers. Uh, I'll exchange emails nine or ten times with people or they'll call me up, uh, ask a lot of different questions, which also is, gives you light to, that's why it's important. It's not important, it's, it's not as important uh, uh, how well you uh, uh, fall down. What counts is how many times you can get up because history is going to teach you that you don't have to uh, say, uh, people don't say no to you eight times before they say yes one time. And you can't let that get you down. And it is it can be discouraging, especially for someone that's thin skinned or, or hadn't been used to taking punches, but it's coming, so just get ready for it. Entrepreneurs are tough folks because you know this now. So just know it's a part of it. You don't have to get knocked down nine times to get up one time and make that sale. That's the average. Sometimes more, sometimes less. So putting your message out there nine times to have that chance, people don't miss it two out of three times. Three times nine is 27, which means the 27 times rule. So when we're planning a serious advertising campaign, I lay out a, a page just like this. I use this this thing right here. I look at three weeks, look at 27 times, uh, and I mean nine, uh, three lines of nine for 27 ads. Now, if I'm using small, inexpensive ads, uh, uh, either on uh, uh, Facebook or somewhere else, in other words, I'm going to spend 5 or $10, I'll lay those out for the days that I'm going to use them. And so if, I, if I'm using 5 and $10 ads, if you see here, I'll spend about $270 uh, during this 27 uh, ads campaign. That's with my ads costing 5 or 10 to $15 a piece. $270. Hold on to that. If I'm doing big expensive ads, like I'm having a grand opening sale or something really special in my business, and those ads cost me $55 or $125 a piece, hmm. I'll spend $2,465. Wow. That's a lot of money. But let me tell you, I don't have that kind of money. I don't sell the kind of products that I'll do that. And I have some big ticket items, but I've learned now that this is not a good plan to do. But you know what? A lot of advertising executives will talk people into spending these kind of bucks with the hope that you will get a return on that investment. And they'll, they'll talk you into doing it once or maybe twice, and then they'll move on to someone else and take their money, and you end up holding an empty basket. I don't want that to happen to you. But I do want you to be in the market. So here's how you do it. Notice here on the, on the second part here where I've mixed in my expensive ads with my low-cost ads. Yeah, as long as you have a good presentation of low-cost ads, people will recognize you, and you don't have to fight that nine times because they, they you have become uh, something real, something that's going to be here. So if you... <coughs> Excuse me. If you've got a continuing campaign of low-cost items that are always keeping your name in front of the public, then when you are ready to spend some big bucks to promote something, you don't have to spend it so much. Remember, the two out of three rule comes into play then, and as long as you put that ad out there three times, there's a good chance your customers that you're targeting will see it. So using the 27 times rule, as we've done here in, in this last presentation, can cut your cost tremendously. In other words, $750 for the campaign instead of $2,465, saving $1,700, and I'm telling you, your effect will be basically the same. $1,700 less. But to make that work, you have to be out there with your continuous promotions, letting people know that you're alive. But what destroys, there's always two sides to every fence, right? What destroys the 27 times rule? What just blows it to pieces? It, it's, a, it's a valid rule, and I want you to use it, and I use it. But there's something here that's so much more important that can blow it away, and that is one raving fan customer can be more powerful and help your business more than a 27 uh uh, part advertising campaign. One raving fan customer can do that for you. Why? Because let's say you go to a restaurant 
let's say you have a friend that goes to a restaurant and enjoys the meal. They like the same stuff that you do. They come back home and tell you, hey, Christina, we've got a brand new restaurant that's just opened up, and their fried chicken is the best I've ever had. Uh, the skull on the skin is perfect, and I like that dark meat that's so juicy, and uh, they serve it hot with great vegetables. I'm telling you, I've never had better fried chicken in my life, and you just got to try it. Well, Christina knows this lady. They've dined together. They know their taste are right. Now, has, has someone got to tell her 27 times to go try that new place? Nah. One Raven fan customer bragging on your business can drive people to your front door a lot faster than any advertising campaign we can put together. So the best investment we'll always make in business is to look after each customer one at a time. Hey, I don't do all I can to see you're 100% satisfied, so you'll tell your friends and neighbors to come and see us. And let me tell you, the human being part of us says to that person, if I come through on my promise, they'll come through on their commitment to tell people to come and see you, and that's how you Raven fan customers start working for you. Our marketing, so important that you tell your story every chance you get a time you get a chance. Having a picture of a piece of woodwork like Chuck had up there is great to talk about that piece of woodwork. But telling the story about a human being and, and, and trying to do this and got into this business because his daughter encouraged him to. And, hey, if you've got something you'd like to be made, all those buzzwords that, that, uh, that Chuck used, and it's easy to tell it. I'm looking forward to spending some private time with Chuck and seeing where all this skills came from, a gifted public speaker like that. Uh, are you a preacher's Chuck? Did you come? <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, you got a great skill and a great voice there. I, I'm looking forward to watching it work for your business. But the way we think and the way we feel, the way we act, telling the story has everything to do with the way we behave. So remember, it is good to put yourself into and your personality into your marketing campaign. It is so very important to stay with your story. Whatever it is, use the pictures, use the videos, use the buzzwords. Now, each one of you in my class, I want you to understand, and I see that Jamie Packer is joining us tonight. Jamie, glad to have you on board. I hope things are well down in Garland, North Carolina. And uh, Nicole's joined in as well. So what is the difference in marketing and advertising? You know, I used to use those two words in the same sentences or pull them in and out like they meant the same, but they really, we need to think of them differently. Marketing is like salt. Marketing is like salt. We're going to use a lot more marketing because that's the big picture. We're going to use a lot. Of, it's a preservative. It preserves your name in the marketplace. I consider advertising like pepper. We don't use it when we need it, not too much of it, but it certainly spices things up, right? So in our planning, our advertising campaign will always be a smaller number money-wise than our marketing campaign because the advertising budget is a part of the marketing pie. Now, this marketing plan that we did on our graphic, that's the pie. The things that we do special on special events or special needs, that's our advertising budget. So keep that in mind and use that as kind of a way of thinking about planning. Remember, you, you uh, in some businesses, the advertising is the major part of the marketing pipe. In other businesses, they just do standard stuff, and that's all that really don't do any special advertising. Some work for some, some work for others. But the key is I want you to know that the difference, the marketing plan and that marketing budget is very, very important. These are questions on your quiz, so remember this. I keep mentioning the quiz. At the end of the series, for you to qualify to become an uh, associate at the academy, you don't need to pass a, a, an open book quiz. I'll give you a lot of questions with a lot of answers. I'll ask you to study them and send them back to me because just writing those answers in the right spot, I know that you're getting the message. So that's, that's all we ask you to do. So these are on your quiz. Marketing long-term, advertising short-term. So let's start this experience today. Have you done your mission and vision statement? Have you written it? Have you practiced it? 
so easy to do, and I've sent you a lot of samples last week. Remember in some of those emails, I gave you samples that you can just take some of those and use them yourself. But I really want you to own it because your mission and vision statement will be part of your introduction videos, will be part of your brochures, you'll use it on your home page at your website. You need a mission and vision statement, and I want you to have it. You need to do it. Send me a copy of it. It's one of the qualifications for uh, becoming an associate member. I want you to have a cell phone number that's related to your business that you use for marketing. Why a cell phone number? Because I want you to be able to receive and send text messages related to your business. A good 20% of the market now, people had rather send texts than send emails. I don't know why. I sure don't, but a lot of people do. I guess it's easier to use with your phone because you can speak into it and such as that. So if you're not into texting, that's a skill that you need to get into because more and more people are going to do business with you if they can do business via text. Cell phones are going to be important. Have you got your business named? Have you thought about your DBAs? Now, in week uh, next week, we're going to talk a lot about DBAs because they're so important, but I want you to have your business name and maybe the different DBAs that you're going to be using, maybe even the name of your websites. Go ahead and write those down. Let me know. Uh, p p when you send your mission statement to me, list those down. And this is critical. If you don't have a menu written down of the different profit centers in your business, the different products that you're going to have, or the different services, if you don't have a menu written down where you can tell the public, how in the world are they going to know what you have to sell? Now, Chuck, I'll, I'll, I'll pick on you a little bit. I want you to have a menu of birdhouses of certain things that you like to do, at least a kind of a summary of some pick-and-choose things. I know that we're after custom-made items, but it's still important to give people an idea of all the different things that you might be able to do. Some you might put prices on. Some you might just say, if you're interested in this, let me know. But have that menu there. And this is the place where you're going to use that menu of products and services to put together your estimated revenues for your business plan. It all ties together. All these dots connect at some point in time. So list down. I want you to have at least five profit centers in your business. And I want them to be linked together in some way that when you're selling somebody one thing, you're going to be able to use those magic words. And by the way, we've got this too. That's the way you'll start stacking your profits and selling the same customers uh, uh, different things. A list of frequently asked questions is very, very handy to have. In every business, people will ask you the same questions day after day after day after day. And for every different profit center, that creates another uh, list of questions that people will need the answers to. Now, the person, the great entrepreneur that you are, will realize the fact that if you start writing these questions down and they'll start writing really good answers that, that give a great representation of your skills and understanding, write those answers underneath. When someone asks you a question, you're going to come right, right, right back with a great answer, and they're going to say, wow, this person knows what they're doing. Or, wow, they anticipated I had that question on my mind. They're a good business person. Instead of humming and hawing and geeing and hauling and say, I just don't know, I need to do some research and this kind of stuff, it's important you don't try to BS your way through stuff. But also, if you're going to be in business, you owe it to yourself and your customers to have a list of frequently asked questions so you can give them good answers. The secret component here to doing that, the secret component to having those good questions and answers is that you're able to use them then at your website. You're able to use them in your brochures. And as people see that, they will become impressed with how well prepared you are. Not many folks do that. Not many folks do that, but as you put those into your text, every time you put those text on your web pages, that helps the SEO people uh, help people drive them to your website. If you put down a question that people frequently ask and they ask it on the Internet and an SEO uh, search engine finds that question on your web page, it will drive them right to your web page. 
that's a big, well-kept secret, but something that can really help you. Your Internet presence, we don't need to talk about that anymore. It's just imperative. If you know, I want you to be on Facebook. Part of getting one of your certificates is having a personal and business Facebook page. So if you're not there, let's get it up and send it to me. I want to be your friend, and I want you to do this. And from there, we can leapfrog into helping your business have a place to play these videos. There's a lot of different things you can do on the Internet now with, with uh, uh, these uh, different, uh, uh, what do you call these things, cue cards. It just left the image. Somebody help me. What do you call these things? Talk to me. Katie? A QR. What do you call this? A QR. A QR. There you go. All right. That's it. More and more companies are using these in their uh, on their Internet site and in their advertising, especially print media, uh, so that people with telephones can take a picture of that QR and it directs them right straight to certain web pages. That's right. So if someone sees something they're interested in, I'll tell you who really uses this a lot is the real estate business. But more and more used car and new car dealers are using these. It may apply to your business. It may not. I haven't gotten into it yet. It's just an area that I needed uh, someone to help me do this, but I'm looking forward to maybe having these uh, these symbols uh, on, on uh, my print material web pages and emails too. All over the place, people are using different codes uh, to help folks find them. This is the uh, Hallmark Company on one of the back of one of their cards. They use several different ways that you can zoom right in, take a picture of that, and then it sends you right straight to a web page. Uh, <clears throat> on your printed media, it's important that you use your uh, that you always use your website address to help people find you. If you're not always promoting now to send people to your websites. Uh, they're not going to be able to get to you. Hallmark does it all over the place on their card. I think about three or different, three or four different places on one little card that they're doing that. Logos are extremely important as well. Have you got a logo? You got one? You thought about it? You want someone to help you uh, design it? There's uh, several people on board right here tonight: Beverly, Christina, uh, Katie, uh, Stephanie, uh, Sarita. Even right here in the goal, probably we got four people that are probably great designers that can help you with your logos. Always be looking for different ways that you can help other people make a little extra money to improve your business. <clears throat> Put together some inter things that will enhance your presentations on the internet. Uh, using different uh, uh, DBAs, as Hallmark's doing here, as big a company as they are, they still on the back of a card are using two more DBAs because it makes money for them and can for you as well. Take a deep breath and I'll change gears. Everything is negotiable. Whatever you're doing, ever how you're putting your message out there, put sub messages and subtext to let folks know this is my advertised price as we talked about in our pricing uh, uh, webinar a few weeks ago, this is my advertised price, but I have some subtext or some small messages that will encourage people to say, well, let's talk about this. What can I do to make this price suit my needs better? has to be always conscious of doing that. Do you have your business cards? I want each of you that, that has a business card to make a copy of it and email it to me tomorrow. Send me a copy of your business card, uh, whatever it is. And if you don't have a business card, then you can write on your own uh, uh, computer. You can make your own, and you can print it off, or uh, and you can print that card off and carry it to a, a place that's got a, a real fine uh, printing machine with different color paper and thick, thick paper like business cards are made of. And they can run you off a bunch of them. And you know how much you'll probably spend? Three or four dollars. Uh, you don't have to spend fifty, sixty dollars to get your business cards now. But I want you to have something that when you talk to the next person uh, this week that you've got a business started, that you can hand them something that makes you look like that you are actually getting ready to do business. Anything less than that is sloughing. 
And Entrepreneur Academy members are not sluffers. We're out here to make it happen. So get your business cards up and running. Send me copies of it. Let me share it with other people that help your business. This is one of my business cards. I have several that, that's around. I, I hear I use the name Anthony Stephen Carver. Not that I'm trying to make a show, but if you go on the Internet and you type in Steve Carver, you will find hundreds and hundreds of other things. But if you type in Anthony Stephen Carver, then you'll see the things I want people to see. So that's because that's the way we set our SEO up. So different reasons you might want to use different names and different DBAs on uh, on uh, different business cards that you do. Each DBA might require a dis different business card that you would add to certain customers. Put together a brochure about your products and services and what you're doing. Uh, Judy did this over in Lillington for her kettle corn business. She came to our classes, went back and put together some nice brochures. Now she has these brochures folded up in a, a nice folder uh, when she's doing her events out with her, selling her kettle corn. And people pick those brochures up, go out and call her back and say, when can you come to our event? Or can I order some of these for a special event? Or can I order some of these for Christmas presents? Those brochures are making her money every time she puts them out. She also lets folks know that what she's doing can, can help people with fundraising. And so good brochures can go a long way. And you want to, you want to go a little extra mile and do these uh, first class so it gives away a very good impression. Put, put together a brochure. I want you to list your target customers in groups. Just like this image says here, who are the particular people you think you can go to now to get your business up and running in a hurry? And put those names down, write them down, and let's figure out how to get some email addresses so that when you get ready uh, that you can start sending emails to them. And when is it time to get started? Now. If you plan to open the business up within the next six months, is today is the right time for you to start letting people know that you're planning on opening this business because people will give you feedback and let you know what they're interested in. Uh, they'll hold off on buying stuff till you get up and running, or they may come to you with some ideas that you never thought of that'll help you have a better business when you do start up. Folks like to help each other. They really do. Uh, so when you have that list of email addresses and send messages out to them, and I'll, I'll help you design messages. Katie would be glad to help you design messages. Get in the game. Stay in the game. Finish the game. Put together your scripted introduction so that when you introduce you to someone, it is inspiring. Have it so natural that the words flow out of your mouth, just like they did with Chuck. Chuck did such a great job using no notes on that video. I was totally impressed because that is not easy to do for most of us. But if you sit down and plan it and practice a little bit and get a script, then all of us can make a good first impression. How many chances do you get to make a first impression? Just one. And that can be the next person. You know, the next person that you meet tomorrow may be your very best future customer in your business. And you don't know them now, but that first impression can go a long, long way. So be ready to introduce yourself and, and be excited about it as an entrepreneur. You can do it. I know you can do it. Let's talk about pricing products again. you got to consider it, how to price those products and services when you're marketing. Remember the three times rule. Remember, you need to merchandise and, and strategize and use psychological pricing, as we talked about in the webinar. Multiply your cost times three times. You'll get a chance to get your raw cost back, your overhead, and make some profit. And then you compare that in the marketplace, if you either adjust it up or down to make sure you're competitive. Uh, display it properly. Uh, think about diff uh, merchandising strategies, and I've got a handout on this. If y'all had not read my merchandising strategy, it's in your handouts for this one. Lots of great information that you can do there. Also mentioned to, to uh, Katie, that's a great uh, webinar that we might do in the future, merchandising. Uh, think about the psychological ways of pricing. We talked about in, that in the webinar a couple of weeks ago, uh, the different ways that you can price your products, the 99-cent rule, the, uh, it's on sale, uh, bundling things, a lot of different ways to price things to help you uh, customers buy from you. Keep your calendar booked up. If you're selling uh, time for money, I want to have four days a week, four weeks a month, 12 months of a year. 
so that indeed you are booked up at least 16 days a month and, and to help your uh, budget uh, meet your business plan. Be conscious. Be conscious of the structured calendar. Not being conscious of it and just saying, I'll take things as they come my way is a good way to say, well, I just don't really care. I can't manage this. I'll just have to deal with what comes my way. Wrong. You need a calendar, and then you need to focus your efforts in filling that calendar up with cash flow items so you can stay in business. And if you don't have one, it's time to start. What are the value-added things that you can add to the services and products that you're adding? Value-added helps you raise your profits. Value-added means that you're saying to the customer, and buy from me because I'll do this, this, and this that other people don't do and not charge you any extra money for it. That's how people uh, actually uh, get paid more for the same products than the folks down the street. And the folks down the street go out of business while you're getting paid more products, more for the product. It's the secret of knowing what value added is. Uh, you're, you're giving those customers more value for what they're spending for you, even though they're spending more money. I'll say to you that you might not understand that. There's, a, there's three different groups of shoppers out there. There's a group of shoppers that are cheap, 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 that hope you never make a penny in your business. They don't care. They just want to beat the price down to the lowest point you can. That's why that you have to know what you're doing when you're setting your prices. Because we want their business. But we want their business and us making a profit doing it. To get their business, we have to price ourselves up so high enough that they look, that they feel like they're getting it so darn cheap we can't be making any money out of them. That's why you have to plan. The second group of people will want to negotiate a little bit. They, they'd like to say, hey, I, I'm just not a person off the street. I'm something special, and I want, a, I want an extra good price. That's why you don't want to say take it or leave it. Have some negotiating room. But the wonderful news is there's a, a good third of your customers that will be glad to pay you what you're asking as long as you're in the ballpark. Some people want to pay the high price. Some people want you to make a good profit. Let me tell you, your enemies aren't going to do business with you. But your friends and neighbors that want you to stay in business, they want you to make a good profit, and they're willing to pay the price for it. So it's important that you have your stuff priced up, that you can enjoy the benefits of the profits that those people will let you make, plus earn the smaller earnings from those other folks. But we want all of their business. We don't want to say to any of them, go on down the way because you're a cheap, cheap, cheap. No, we want to have some stuff they can come in and give us some money too. It takes all the different groups of customers for us to put together the plan. It it takes a community to help a business stay in business. Fair market value, that's going to teach you every day that when you're buying and selling, that you always want to purchase below fair market value so you can sell above fair market value. And when you understand that and you apply it to your business, then you're going to enjoy a lot of different levels of buying and selling and be able to increase your margins significantly as you become more experienced in the marketplace. Profitability has a whole lot to do with how long you've been in the game. Because every day that you stay in the game, Every day that you learn new, more and new tricks help you to be able to be more efficient in your profitability. Uh, you know, I've been around a long time, and I've had a chance to learn and forget a lot of stuff. But one of the reasons I feel like that, that uh, Carver Equipment Fast Forward is still in business after 63 years is because of all the little things that we've learned along the way. But always the number one thing that we've got to remember is look after every customer one at a time. A raving fan customer, I keep coming back and let you stay in business. So we want to create those RFCs. <clears throat> you remember this fella? That's Bubba Blue. Remember where you saw him? He was in Forest Gump. Why in the world would I have Bubba Blue's picture up here? Because he is the master. He taught me 
the mastery of DBAs in the shrimp business. Because whatever kind of shrimp that you had an interest in, Bubba Blue was going to have it for you in his business if he'd have lived and came back from Vietnam. Shrimp Creole, gumbo, shrimp soup, shrimp burgers, boiled shrimp, shrimp sandwiches. Any kind of shrimp you want, Bubba was going to have it for his customers. What do we learn here? That whatever type of shrimp that you're selling, you need to have a DBA for each kind. Because when we market on the Internet, if we just put the word shrimp out there, we don't have a, a lot of people or nobody comes that's just looking for the single word shrimp. But if we have that particular customer in that particular niche market, remember that niche market, that targeted customer group, and we're going to make the best shrimp gumbo in the whole world, and we market on our webpage, www.shrimpgumbo.com, or the name of that as the name of our webpage, then the SEO people are going to send them right straight to your webpage instead of all the other rest of the world that's just marketing shrimp. So I sell about 15 different types of mowing machines that cut grass and hay and wheat. Weeds, ditch banks, pond banks. I got different pages for each different type of mower. All the different things that, in your uh, things that you're going to be selling, from wind chimes to bird cages to to candles uh, to uh, logos to websites. Tom, uh, Beverly, all your different uh, uh, blue crab items, uh, T-shirts, Eastern North Carolina, Aurora, North Carolina. Uh, Bayboro, North Carolina, anytime you can add a specific phrase into your DBA, then you will add the chances that more people that your targeted customer group will find you. And Bubba, Bubba Blue has it nailed down with his shrimp market. I want you to nail it down with, with the things that you sell. Master the use of DBAs. We'll talk a lot about them next week as well. The look and hook test. What, what does it take for the look and hook test? Because most advertising don't work, and you'll waste your money with work out with most of it. But the L and the H, and this is one of your quiz questions, the L and the H, the look and the hook, <clears throat> helps you have your advertising to be accountable. That's to say that I'm not going to spend money on something that doesn't work. I want accountability with my advertising. And how do you get that? You have a way of testing it to see if it works. So here's the deal. When you start an advertising campaign, you want to make sure that it looks good. It's worth looking at. Uh, these uh, videos, uh, that, that, that's a good advertising campaign. Uh, these videos make a difference. We need to be dramatic, different, simple, assertive. Have some weird stuff in it. Be dramatic in there to hold someone's attention. And, and have, use good images and good colors and good music. But the hook, the hook is what you insert in that ad or in that video that is a call to action. That is, come on now, if you want this before July the 4th, we need to order it now. If you need your carpet cleaned uh, before school starts, we need to get an appointment in here and, and get you ready to go. If you want your pool opened up before a certain date, call us today. In other words, give people an incentive in the ad to call you now. Because calling you now means if they call, your ad is working. If they don't call, let's don't run this ad anymore. You'll be able to watch your customer traffic flow back and forth. That's why I am so excited about the videos. Once we put videos on our web pages, I can tell you that the next day and the next week, I can see results start pouring in. And that's why I get excited about it. A lot of things I've tried through the years uh, wasn't worth bananas, but these videos are working if you've got the right message in them. Another hook is to offer discounts or certain incentives to bring them in before certain dates. Uh, coupon cards, uh, discount cards to do that. We do that in our business as well, and it makes a big, big difference. Next, who are these target groups I'm talking about? Well, I started out with the people that I feel I could identify with the best and I'd have common denominators with. And I'd encourage you to do that. Whatever you're doing, 
whatever your experience is, whatever you like to do, your hobbies or ever, figure out the groups of people that you feel most comfortable doing business with because you know what? Once they know that you're a part of that group, they'll feel more comfortable about doing business with you. Uh, if you're a veteran, a soldier, a family, member of the American Legion, the VFW, maybe you're a mom, a teacher. Uh, maybe you're someone that lives in Pamlico County or in Oriental or in, in Aurora uh, or, or Alliance. It may be that you're looking for common denominators in a certain group. It could be grandparents, uh, senior citizens, maybe Masons or Shriners. Uh, people that's members of the Chambers of Commerce. Whatever you can find common denominators, those are the groups that I want you to target. Get these email addresses on these folks. Maybe it's folks you go to church with or uh, graduates from your high school class or your high school. All these folks you have common denominators with them, and they are more likely to do business with you and or to send business to you from people they know than complete strangers out here in the world. Let's take advantage of what we call that low-hanging fruit, people that are close to you. Have preacher, uh, teacher appreciation sales if you've got a retail business or, or, or making some special art. <clears throat> Nicole, uh, you might even offer some special uh, teacher appreciation things here at the end of the school year. Uh, this is, would be a good time to do that and offer some special deals from them and put some posters up, send out some flyers. Uh, offer a special discount. Even if you don't make quite as much profit, if you can establish a regular customer that becomes a raving fan, that little bit of uh, profit loss that maybe you discount enough to get them coming in, if that creates a repeat customer for year after year after year, that is a great investment. So think like that a little bit and take a few risks uh, to bring those new customers to you. <coughs> New customers have a chance to become raving fan customers if you do the right business. So, are you on the Internet yet? Well, you're here tonight, so I know you're on the Internet in person. Congratulations. Uh, you are using a, 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 a Zoom-type platform. Congratulations. Can you use that Zoom-type platform in your business to help promote business? I'm going to start trying to do that with some of my customers. I, I think I'm ready for it. I know a lot of my customers are. But it takes a little bit of courage to us to invite a complete stranger to come and see you. But, you know, through these uh, webinars, I've kind of gotten over that. And you can, too, so that you can invite customers. to Let's set up a meeting to talk about it. Chuck, I can see this being a big deal for you. If you're able to say to someone in Wyoming that, that found your video and is interested in you making something special for them, either custom, something you already got in your plan, or maybe something they've got, for you to be able to, to chit-chat with them uh, through a Zoom-type platform uh, could be a very, very strong marketing tool. And that's true for all of you, uh, Sarita and Tom, uh, Leanne, whatever we're talking about doing, Christina, uh, let's think about how we can promote the use of the Internet personally and grab it and take advantage of the, of the power it's got. At the end of this series, I really want you to send me a picture of your mobile page, of your mobile page. This will qualify you for an extraordinary uh, going the extra mile award. If, if you've got uh, your mission statements and your mobile page looking effective and powerful, have you got a mobile page now? If you don't, let's get one. What does it cost you? Almost nothing. But you might want to talk to someone like Tom, a webmaster that knows how to make these things happen for you. Uh, get your mobile page working. Why? Because 85% of the people that's looking for you are going to find you on the phone. And if you have a mobile page that works, it'll help them find you now instead of not finding you at all. Google My Business, as we had talked about earlier, is just like having a private website that you can use for your own purposes. Get your Google My Business account. Figure out a way to get up there and get up there now. And the very next day, people will be able to rave and, and about you, find you, and start doing business. Uh, it's a very powerful platform. Uh, Katie said that she's learned a lot about it and it can help you in that direction as well. Your landing pages at your website are where people will spend the money. We don't want a website that just is there and looks good and smells good and sounds good. I mean, that's a nice thing to have. But what we want is a website that does all that, but mainly 
encourages people to send you money, encourages people to call you up and send you their check or give you their credit card number or to log in and spend some money with you uh, right on their website with a checkout uh, software. You can do it, but we have to get started. You can do it only after you have a menu of things for people to shop at. You need that menu, just like Nicole has done. And I visited her website, was able to enjoy the experience. When I saw something I wanted, I was able to click on a certain box, give her some money, and you know what? I got an immediate answer back from her website, and two days later, the product was in my mailbox. So I know folks can do it right here in Pamlico County and in Harnett County. All of us need to take advantage of that opportunity. To start with, though, you need to have a marketing plan, a list of things that are for sale, images and videos to help people do it. Look here. People are afraid of a lot of folks on the Internet. I know that's the truth, especially on big-ticket items. I had a fellow today from Georgia who called me, and he was, yeah, he was in Georgia, and he's in no, Alabama. And he, here's what, here's how it started. He said, Steve, are you the same Steve Carver that's in the video of the mowing machine in, in Arkansas? I said, I am, but I'm not in Arkansas. That's where my, my customer who made the video for me, that's where he is. I'm in North Carolina. He said, well, my wife says that I'm addicted to this video because I watch it 20 times a day, she said. And today she said, stop watching that video and call up Mr. Carver and talk to him about that mowing machine that you want. The video moved him forward, and he opened up talking to me as an individual. That was powerful. It made me even more excited about being with you all tonight to share that with you. <clears throat> Talked to him, gave him the price. He said, you know what, i got to decide whether I'm better off to sit here and watch the video and dream about it or to send you $5,500 and take that out of my savings at 75 years old. I said, well, do whichever one you want, but I said, it's going to be a lot more fun a lot more fun for you if you're actually using that mower yourself instead of watching it on, on your uh, computer screen there. And so we both had a good laugh. He said, I don't think about it and call you back. See, that's one of those one out of nine times. He will probably call me back at least eight times or send me emails or want me to answer eight questions for him. That's the way it works. But it started out on a good foundation because of the video and the website. When they buy from me, we put we get them to give us testimonies, and we put those testimonies up as proof, living proof that we've been in business a long time and we treat our customers right and they're glad to brag on us. I also like to put a, a list of the towns where people buy different products from us. Over on the right-hand side, all over the United States, uh, people have bought this model here and this model here, from Washington to Louisiana, uh, Missouri, Virginia, New York, all over. Put that information on your website as testimonials, and it will help people get rid of the anxiety that folks have. I've sent you all uh, my YouTube channel. Um, my uh, associates are helping me uh, better develop that. I claim no expertise in this area. But I, I know how important it is, and I'm planning on pursuing it and finding the folks that can help me do it. Uh, so not only do you want your YouTube, but you want a YouTube channel. So what does that do for you? Maybe you don't have a regular website yet, but you can have a YouTube channel where you give your messages and talk about your products and do your L&H marketing uh, through videos. Uh, and that, that YouTube channel works just like a, a, a web uh, site for you. And maybe in a lot of your situations, maybe even more powerful. I would say, Nicole, that, that if you uh, push your YouTube channel with your different products, and the same with Christina, uh, that with, with, with all the skills that you've got, Christina, pushing different products with different videos, and it's good for you to have a lot of small videos. And the key is name these videos with your DBAs, you might have one video that has uh, 10 or 12 DBAs on it. Same video, but be up there 10 or 12 different times with a different uh, DBA so that when people are searching for it in different ways, that video would come up. But once they watch that video, it's important that you have enhanced it so they can stop it and get your email address or your website information or your telephone number 
uh, so that they can stop it and use that video as a way to get in touch with you. So it's, not, it's just not having the video, but it's using it with a channel and then getting the SEOs to help find it and send people to it. Man, that was a lot of talking, wasn't it? I do feel excited and pumped up about marketing. I am so happy that y'all are here tonight and knowing that maybe you'll start doing some of these homework assignments. It's, it's time to get serious about it now. You do your homework assignments this week and next week, and then I'm going to start sending the quiz out, ask you to send them to me, and you'll start earning your certificates. But mainly what you're going to start earning and what you're going to start owning, you're going to start owning self-confidence. You're going to start owning self-assurance. You're going to start knowing that what's next is, if I do this marketing stuff right, and get my customers in line so they keep coming back to me and keep doing business with me, I don't have a good business. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that. If I didn't believe it, it wouldn't be saying it. So get ready to, to get started in a really good way and, and know that that uh, uh, Katie is there for you. Uh, go by and talk to her. What can we do? What's our next steps? How can I do this thing that Steve's talking about? Uh, uh, send me a message. I want to help you do it. I want to see you grow. Every chance you have, be the best person you can be. Uh, you got to live with yourself. Know that you're not on this trip alone. you got a lot of other entrepreneurs that have been there that are, will ride with you if you give them the chance. And sometimes it feels like we're in this all together. Maybe you don't have a support group or, uh, that you feel really close to. Well, look over on the side of it and invite Jesus to ride with you. He'll be your friend every time. All you got to do is just welcome him into your life, share with him your problems, pray with him, ask him for help and guidance. Sometimes you might not get the answer you want, but it'll come through one way or the other, and you won't be going wrong. Follow your faith, whoever you believe in, whatever belief you have. As long as it's helping you to be a better person, you go for it, and we're all going to be pulling for you as well. Experience the magic marketing moment. Now, how do we do that? That's when you are talking to your customer. Step number one to get that Raven fan customer of brain seeds working. Step number one, I don't do all I can to see that you're 100% satisfied. And you're going to be so happy you did business with me that you're going to encourage your friends and neighbors and family to come do business with me too. That was one and two. We planted the seeds. And then we're going to water the seed after the sale when we say to them, thank you so much for your order. We appreciate your business. And you are 100% satisfied. When you follow up, you don't say you are 100% satisfied, right? And you don't get that. And then it's time that you pop the question, didn't you say you were going to buy this or that? Or who was that prospect you were going to recommend? Or when do you want to set up another appointment for us to do this again? That's the magic moment when you get the information to know what's next. And what's next, time after time, day after day, year after year, means that you'll have a sustainable business. You'll come through the, top, the, the, the bad times because customers will stay with you if they're raving fans. They may have some slow times, but you'll figure out a way to stay in business if you've got a good customer base and you'll know what's next by doing that. I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, staying with us and uh, and uh, enjoying tonight. So I'm going to stop the recording now. I think I am. <laughs>